Good people from just about everywhere, thanks for choosing our miniature show. My name is Ed and I brought with me one magnificent magician. His name is the future Richard Maspero. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Splendid. I, uh, interesting day, the 8th of February, watershed day in English football. Red Napper quitted, Fabio Capello quits. It, it all happened, didn't it? Yeah, and a couple of days before that, it was John Terry who was being relieved of the captaincy. So it's all happening in England. It really is indeed. So Fabio Capello, language barrier, the Capello Index. Remember that one? The uh, was system of analysis that yeah. he was going to judge the players yeah. by and all that type of thing. John Terry, after the Algeria game in the World Cup, which was so horrific in Cape Town, saying, let's take the boys out and have a few beers. All the controversy surrounding it. He was aloof, he was hard-handed, he was curt, and his, he was a bit of a grouch, wasn't he? Yeah. Wasn't the most popular guy, and I think people are generally quite happy to see him go. I think that's the general public sentiment. I think that's the general sentiment from the players as well. I don't think they're too happy that uh, Despite the he odd was tweet. there. Yeah, the odd tweet. But I mean, obviously, if you're putting it on a public platform, they're, they're going to be as nice as possible. Um, but no, I, I don't think they're too upset about the whole thing. I don't think they're upset that Capello's going. And uh, the general sentiment from across the pond seems to be that they're uh, in favor of an English coach. So language barrier and foreign adaptation seems to be, uh, you know, the, a little bit of a problem. So the developments today were that Stuart Pearce is going to take over for the Netherlands friendly which is in March. I think it's in March anyway if memory serves. So Psycho takes over for the time being but Redknapp is the favourite. Now Harry Redknapp had went from accused to acclaimed in the space of no time. His son was the silent witness that stood by him the whole way through. Now one thing I must say is that Jamie Redknapp is an utterly likeable guy. For him to have been brought up to be such an individual, his dad can't be that dodgy, seriously. No, I don't think so. I think uh, Harry, as you say, is the popular choice. Um, and he's done wonders with Spurs. I mean, they're, they're having a great season and they're doing very well. He seems to be tactically astute. He seems to love working with the players. I saw a couple of quotes from him talking about, you know, if he were to get the England job or if that were to be an option, he'd miss the day-to-day -day interaction with players. And, and that, to me, says a lot about the guy and the way he works. So I think he's probably one of the, the front runners for the job, but there's a couple of obstacles in his way. One is that the FA have now had to fork over a good couple of million pounds. 50 million pounds on Sven Goran Eriksson and Fabio Capello. To get rid of them. And he's signed to Spurs at the moment and they'll have to fork out more cash to get him released from Spurs. And whether they'll do that or not is debatable. Of course, now Harry Redknapp is looking to get into Champions League football again. We associate the golden generation very much with Fabio, I'm um, not Fabio Capello, sorry, with Harry Redknapp. You look at the likes of Frank Lampard, Rio Ferdinand, Joe Cole, the guys that came through the ranks at West Ham, he knows that those guys have moved on now. So he is well aware that the guys like Kyle Walker, the guys like Phil Jones, the guys like Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, he's going to do wonders with these guys. Capello's left a few behind, but Redknapp knows where we're going in the future. Now, one thing that Harry Redknapp is excellent at is eliminating any psychological blockages that are in the way of players. He makes them believe in themselves. He believes in the, the sort of blood, sweat and tears kind of guy. They're not robots. He treats them as such. Do you think that that's going to work in England's favour? Because I certainly do. I think so. I think that's the sort of approach that England actually need, you know. Let's start managing the players themselves as people and human beings as opposed to, you know, just treating them like a name or a statistic or whatever it might be that Capello is doing. So no, I think it's, a, it's the right approach for England and it's what they need at the moment. The one thing that he does do very well as well is that he removes the fear. Now Henry Winter was saying this in the Telegraph today that England have been kind of cowed by this fear. They get on the grand stage and then they sort of freeze up. It's ridiculous. You look at a guy like Lampard who's never really known where his role has, has sort of sat, but yet when he plays for Chelsea, he plays that sort of end up in the box late and put it home. Same with a guy like Wayne Rooney who was useless during the World Cup. These guys freeze on the national stage, don't they? Yeah, and uh, you can chuck in Stevie G's name as well. Hasn't really settled into a position in the England setup that he seems to be comfortable with or that the fans seem to reckon he's suited to. So it's been difficult for them and, and a lot of that goes down to the debate of whether Lampard and Gerrard should be playing in the same team together. I know there's a school of thought that says that, that shouldn't happen, but uh, they're two quality players and you can't really leave them out of the side. Vastly experienced and two good footballers. So I don't know, it, it just it's going to take a fresh approach and a different way of thinking and, and honestly, you know, Harry's the man for that. To wrap things up, so we're all assuming and we all kind of know that Harry Redknapp is the people's choice, right? So who's, gonna, who's he going to pick as captain? A lot of people have thrown Scott Parker out, 10 caps, 31 years old, Pfft, great player, still going to do a job, not captain material. 
Are we looking at a guy like Joe Hart? From the back, Ike Casillas has proved that the goalkeepers can do it. Phil Jones in midfield, Jack Wilshire. there's so many names. Do you think that the captaincy at international level is what it's made out to be? Is it that important? I don't think it is, but that being said, you do want somebody with a bit of experience to lead the side. And for me, I'd say Steven Gerrard. He's just the first name despite that springs that to Cup. mind. Despite the World Cup, despite the fact that he appears to be made of glass and is injured every five minutes. But I, I can't see Joe Hart or, a, you know, people are talking about Rio Ferdinand as well. I can't see that happening. There's just he no other names that, uh, that spring to mind for me. And Wayne Rooney? Really? <laughs> That's a good one. No. Bit of a mystery, that guy, when he plays for England, let's be honest. Okay, so we have established that we're pretty split on who he wants as England captain. Who do you want as England captain? We're pretty unanimous in the fact that Harry Redknapp is the man for the job, despite him saying today that he is committed to, to Spurs' cause and getting them back into the Champions League. We'll be back next week. This one's topical. It's going to roll on for a long time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's a super slick close. Uh, I'm pissed, that's why. Do it to the wrong freaking camera, though. Oh, did you go to the close? Oh, oh for f sakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you must just look squint then, that's fine.